Hi everyone, it's David from Tackle Share, and today we are going to talk about bluegill and pumpkin seed. Two species that are very closely related and they're both sunfish. And uh, they're behind me on the record fish wall at the OFAH Mario Cordellucci Hunting and Fishing Heritage Centre. So it's these two species here. Let me get them uh, down for a better view and I'll go over the differences between them. Okay, so I've got the two mounts in front of me. Hopefully they uh, show up well in the video. Uh, on my left, I have bluegill, and on the right, I have pumpkin seed. So they're in the same family. They look very similar, and they're both shaped like a frying pan. So that's the way I remember that frying pan, panfish, uh, that's the easiest way to remember. And the main difference between the two, uh, because they look very similar, they both have some striping, they both have some spots. This pumpkin seed often has some orange spots, orange pumpkin, but you can't reliably tell that apart. The best way and the most accurate way to tell them apart is that the bluegill has a black gill cover. So if I look at this uh, gill cover, it's got a black gill cover. Whereas the pumpkin seed has a bit of red on the tip of it. So if it has red on the tip of the gill cover, it's a pumpkin seed. Okay, remember? Black, bluegill, red on the tip. It will have a black gill cover, but it's gonna have red on the tip, pumpkin seed. Uh, you'll see that the coloration, they're very vibrant, and I also like to think of them uh, sunfish um, off the dock is because in shallow waters with the sunlight, they are very striking and they're very bright and vibrant. Um, so they really stand out if you're fishing with uh, children that you'll be able to see them swimming around and they do like to um, go for the bait quite easily. They're quite aggressive. So I'm gonna get into a little more detail about the two of them individually, but very similar. Black gill is blue, BB, and red on the tip, pumpkin seed. Okay, so for the blue gill, it's a warm water fish. So they prefer warm water, again, similar to the yellow perch we talked about, they're gonna like water close to 20 degrees Celsius. They thrive in the summertime temperatures in Ontario, and you're gonna see them really close to the surface trying to uh, stay warm in the sunlight. They're gonna prefer moderate to clear water, so not really clear, not really dark and murky, but somewhere in between, and they will like to be around weed growth because it helps protect them from larger fish that want to eat them. So bluegill like to spawn in mid-spring to early summer. They, the female can lay up to 38,000 eggs because only a few of them are gonna make it to adulthood. And what she does is she clears out the bottom of the lake or river, gets all the silt out of the way and lays them directly on the hard bottom. And the male will come and fertilize the eggs and then protect them. And that male will stay with those eggs and protect them until they hatch and can swim on their own. The reason it does this is other fish are looking for a quick snack and are happy to eat other fish eggs, including other competing panfish or sunfish. So the males stay with the eggs and protect them while they're hatching. The diet of bluegill, they eat primarily insects and larvae. So the early stages of insect growth that stay in the water to, uh, to hatch. So they've got a, a rather small mouth and that's why they can't eat really big fish. They will eat some small fry, so other small fish uh, when they're just hatched, but primarily they are going to eat insects and their larvae. Bluegill can live up to eight to 10 years in the wild. And this one is the record fish caught in Ontario. It weighs 1.83 pounds. So that's the biggest bluegill you're gonna find in Ontario. If and for length, they're usually about six to 10 inches in length. So that's from the tip of their mouth to the tip of the tail is six to 10 inches long. That's usually how big um, they're gonna be as an adult. And if you catch one that is nine inches in length or longer, you can submit it to Angler Awards and receive a certificate for that as well. So if you wanna catch these fish, it's really easy. This is one of the easiest ones you're gonna catch. It's great for kids to, to catch off the dock or off uh, the edge of the shoreline because they're really easy to catch once you find them. They form schools, so there'll be dozens 
uh, of fish together at once and they like to fight for their size. So they're not the biggest fish, but they fight hard once they grab your hook and start to swim away. So they're a lot of fun to catch. The best way to catch them, uh, I recommend, is a bobber, a hook, and a worm. Really simple, really basic, but the bobber helps tell you if it's got a bite, and as soon as you see that, you kind of set the hook and pull on the line. And uh, worms, they love live bait. They're gonna go for live bait all the time, and it smells good, so if you've got some worms, cut them up into pieces, because again, they have quite small mouths, so if you use a whole uh, full-size earthworm it's going to be too big and they're going to nibble it and they're not going to grab the hook so cut up a piece of worm put it on the hook and cast into the school right around the weeds and they're going to go nuts for them and you're going to pull them in a lot of fun okay pumpkin seed are also warm water fish so they're going to be in warmer waters and that typically means close to the shoreline or in shallower areas and they do love to be around vegetation or weeds. So you're going to find pumpkin seed there. They're going to be swimming around there to protect themselves from other larger fish that want to eat them. Pumpkin seed also spawn in late spring to early summer. They do like when the temperature gets close to 20 degrees Celsius in the water and they love to build their nests and lay their eggs around submerged vegetation, basically uh, weeds in the lake. The female for pumpkin seed lay anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 eggs at a time. So considerably less than the bluegill, but still a lot of eggs at one time. And the same male will fertilize the same female's eggs across a few different nests uh, in those vegetations. And that just reduces the risk of others predating those eggs if they split them up across a few nests. Just like the bluegill, the males will protect the nest the whole time that they're very vulnerable. So the eggs take three days to, lay, uh, to hatch, and then the male will still stay there for another nine days to protect the very young fry as they uh, hatch from their eggs and start to swim around very uh, close to the nest. The male will protect them from other fish uh, eating them up. Once the fry, which are what baby fish are called, leave the nest, the male will prepare the nest, the next nest for more eggs to be laid by the female. The diet of the pumpkin seed is very similar to the bluegill. It loves insects and larvae. So dragonfly larva, uh, it'll eat a dragonfly if it's stuck on the surface, midges, ants, damselflies, any of those insects, it will uh, happily eat them up. It doesn't typically go for other fry of other species because it has such a small mouth and it's a smaller fish, it sticks to insects. The age for this one, again, can get eight to 10 years of age in the wild. This one was a record weight of 1.00 pounds. So almost half the weight of the record bluegill, but still a very large, fish for pumpkin seed. So like bluegill, they're from tip of their mouth to the tail, and this one's a little bit uh, damaged, are six to 10 inches long. So they're gonna be anywhere, maybe about this, this length out there, you're gonna see them. Um, so the pumpkin seed, the fishing tips that I have to suggest is to use a hook, bobber, and worm very similar to bluegill, small worm, small hook, and a bobber, and you're gonna be set to go. If you do want something a little bit different, you can choose a small spinner, or another grub, or another type of small hook, like a jig. Uh, you, do, well, you want to avoid something that's too big, because again, they have very small mouths, and they won't be able to small uh, swallow anything too big, and if it is too big, they're probably gonna swim away from it but they will certainly inspect a worm over and over again. And uh, they have a very subtle nibble so that you really have to be care uh, paying attention because I've had dozens or hundreds of times uh, a worm get eaten off my hook without even me knowing it. Uh, and so that's why a small bit of worm is the best uh, option. The last point is where to cast. So any shoreline where there's a few weeds, under sunken logs, under a dock, they're gonna be swimming around. So if you drop a line just beside the dock, you're going to get some nibbles from pumpkin seed or bluegill. So there's lots of places you can find them. You can fish for them through the ice as well. So but that's basically it. So 
we've got bluegill and pumpkin seed. Remember pumpkin seed have the red dot on the, the gill plate cover. Bluegill do not have the red dot, it's just a black uh, gill cover. And both are gonna be found together or separate and in schools. So once you find one, you're gonna find a dozen or two. So a lot of fun fishing. Thanks a lot for watching again. Please uh, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time. Take care.